Today, I'll show you how I pole mounted my Topo Color Pro outdoor camera using this handy pole mounting kit. It uses these adjustable pipe clamps, but you'll see later that we're not going to need that much clamp. And here are the screws that came with the camera. We have a full unboxing video, by the way, if you want to see everything that comes with the Color Pro camera box. And now we're going to align the camera base to the pole mount. As you can see, there are a lot of holes which allows flexibility with various camera models. As shown, the screws fit right in, and now we're going to try mounting it using the plastic screw anchors. It's easier if you remove the tightening collar first, although you'll see that it's not going to work out because the plastic anchors need something solid to tighten against. So what I did was get a piece of scrap wood, a saw, and a pencil to mark the lines where I'd cut. I have a scrap piece of plywood in this case and we're going to cut it so it fits inside the pole mount bracket. You have to make sure your piece of wood isn't so thick that it won't be able to slide in, so take that into account. At this point, I got my pencil out and marked where I'd cut. Remember that you don't want to go up to the very edge if your wood is on the thick side. I'm just using the straight edge of the mount here to draw the line, but you can use a ruler if you want. After making the first line, draw the second line you'll use as a cutting guide. Make sure it has full coverage of your pole mount base's holes. Once the measurements are right, I got my saw out and started sawing. Does it have to be pretty? No, but to make your life easier, it has to be a single piece of wood that can hold the camera up. And that's it. Time for the other side. As you can see here, I made a mistake chipping the wood, but again, it doesn't really have to look perfect. It just has to be stable enough and in one piece. And there it is, our cut scrap piece of wood. Now we're going to do a test to see if it fits. As you can see, it has full coverage of all the mounting plate's holes. This gives us flexibility if we want to use a different camera's mounting system in the future. And now we're back. Now let's find a way to attach the two together. As you can see from the side, the wood's thickness decides the proper width. Anyway, like with most DIY projects, it helps to measure first before doing anything like screwing or cutting. So let's use the base here to find out where to drill. I'm going to try to use the mounting guide sticker here that was also included in the box, but you can see it doesn't really work out. And yeah, it doesn't really work how I thought it would. So I removed the sticker at this point and put it back. Now let's put the wood piece back in. And now here's one of the ways to do it right. First off, I loosened the collar on the camera's ball socket mount so I could get easy access to the base. Then I got a pencil out ready to mark the holes. So what you want to do is to get the camera base in a position where all the screw holes can see the wood. This way, you won't screw into any metal parts. After you find a viable position, mark the holes. After that, I got a small hand drill out and drilled pilot holes for the screws. Again, this is easier if you have a power drill handy, but actually you can just screw it in directly with a screwdriver if your wood isn't too hard. Once you've made the holes deeper, the screws are ready to go in. I didn't really need the plastic anchor since these screws hold well in plywood. Basically, just screw all three of them a little bit until the base gets held in place. This way, it's not swinging around making your life more difficult. You can see the screws peeking from the back. We're almost done and it's looking pretty stable so far. Let's give it a few knocks to test. Anyway, snake the cable through after that so you can put the camera back on the plastic base. And if it's too tight, feel free to temporarily loosen the screws a bit. After that, pop the camera back into the ball socket mount and tighten the collar. It should be very stable at this point, but let's just tighten everything up a bit more. The screws slightly jut out the back of the wood, but you'll see in a bit that it's fine. And I'm shaking it here to show how stable it is, even if we just used a scrap piece of plywood. And now for the adjustable pipe clamps. They're made of flexible metal and tighten through these teeth here. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver to adjust them. But these are too big for where I'm going to mount them, so you'll see how we take care of that next. And here's the tree we're going to mount the camera on. And since I didn't want to spend the whole night there, I cut the hoop to size. You might want to do the same depending on what pole you want to mount your camera. I also left a bit more length so that I have options if I want to mount it on something slightly thicker next time. And now you can see how it'll be kind of finicky, but what you want to do is to screw it right in. As you can see, I use different positions to keep the pole mount stable, including using my hand to make the clamp easier to screw in. Since there's a lot of slack at the beginning, it's harder to tighten, but thankfully it gets easier later on. As you can see, 
As it gets tighter, it gets easier. But try to not get injured with the newly cut part of the clamp since it can be razor sharp. I'm just leaving it like that here, but you can tuck it in the base itself later on. And now for the bottom clamp. Here's when I cut it shorter. Screwing it again at this point was much easier since the camera was at a stable spot thanks to the tightened upper clamp. Although it would be a way quicker job with a power drill. And after tightening, here's what it looks like afterward. And here it is. And what I like about the pole mount is that it's less destructive than other ways of mounting like using screws or tape that may damage the surface. And that's how I mounted my Tapo Color Pro outdoor cam. Like this video if it helped. And tell us in the comments down below what smart camera tutorials you'd like us to do next.